In this video, I will walk you through free response question number four from the 2007 Form B AP Calculus exam. Let f be a function defined on the closed interval from negative 5 to positive 5, with f of 1 equal to 3. The graph of f prime, the derivative of f, consists of two semicircles and two line segments as shown above. Part A. For the interval from negative 5 to positive 5, find all x values for which f has a relative maximum. Justify your answer. The steps for finding a relative maximum are number one, find the critical values, and step two, make a sign chart. The critical values of f are the x values, which either cause f prime to equal zero or to be undefined. Looking at the graph of f prime, we don't see any discontinuities. There are no asymptotes, there are no holes. In other words, f prime is defined everywhere. So we don't have to worry about where f prime is undefined. So where is f prime equal to zero? Remember, we are looking at the graph of f prime. So we simply need to see where the graph touches the x-axis. So we have these four critical values. Okay, so we have the critical values. Now it's time to make the sign chart. Since they gave us the graph of f prime, we can easily make the sign chart right on this graph. Uh, at negative five, the graph begins. So to the left of negative five, we don't, uh, we don't really know what was happening. I'm just gonna put a question mark there. But after negative five, the graph is above the x-axis. So it goes from question mark to positive. Uh, let's look at the critical value of negative three. To the left of negative 3, f prime is above the x-axis, f prime is positive. To the right of negative 3, it becomes negative. So we go from positive to negative at x equals negative 3. Let's jump over to x equals 1. To the left, f prime is negative, below the x-axis. To the right, it is positive, above the x-axis. Okay, let's jump over to x value of 4. To the left, f prime is positive, to the right, f prime is negative. Think about the graphical relationship between f and f prime. At a relative maximum, the original function f goes from increasing to decreasing. If the function is increasing, then f prime will be positive. If the function is decreasing, f prime will be negative. So, at a relative maximum, f prime should go from positive to negative. Looking back at our sign chart, we see that f prime goes from positive to negative at an x value of negative three, and it goes from positive to negative at x equals four. What about the question mark? Well, we don't know what the question mark is, but it goes from something to positive. So it definitely does not go from positive to negative. So we can disregard the negative five. Here's our summary statement and justification. f of x has a relative max at x equals negative three and x equals four because f prime changes from positive to negative at x equals negative three and x equals negative four. Part B, on the open interval from negative five to positive five, find all values of x at which the graph of f has a point of inflection. Justify your answer. A point of inflection occurs when f double prime changes signs. However, for this problem, we are given the graph of f prime. We don't have the graph of f double prime. As we think about the graphical relationship between f prime and f double prime, we realize that uh, if f double prime changes signs, then f prime will change either from increasing to decreasing or from decreasing to increasing. So let's look back at our graph of f prime and see where it changes from increasing to decreasing or vice versa. Notice that f prime goes from increasing to decreasing at x equals negative four. So that's a point of inflection. f prime changes from decreasing to increasing at x equals negative one, another point of inflection. 
Finally, notice that f prime goes from increasing to decreasing at x equals 2, a third point of inflection. Let's summarize and justify. f has a point of inflection at x equals negative 4 and x equals 2 because f prime changes from increasing to decreasing at x equals negative 4 and x equals 2. f has a point of inflection at x equals negative 1 because f prime changes from decreasing to increasing at x equals negative 1. Part C. Find all intervals on which the graph of f is concave up and also has a positive slope. Explain your reasoning. First of all, a positive slope means that f would be increasing. So we need to find all intervals on which f is concave up and increasing. We need to translate this information into a description of f prime, since that's the graph that we have. So if f is concave up, that means f prime will be increasing. If f is increasing, that means f prime is positive. So as we look at the graph of f prime, we need to see where f prime is increasing and positive. F prime is positive for these parts of the graph because it is above the x-axis. Out of these red sections, the purple parts show where F prime is increasing. So F prime is positive and increasing from negative 5 to negative 4 and from 1 to 2. Time to summarize and justify. F is concave up and has a positive slope on the intervals from negative 5 to negative 4 and 1 to 2 because F prime is increasing and positive on these intervals. Part D. Find the absolute minimum value of F of X over the closed interval from negative 5 to positive 5. Explain your reasoning. When you are asked to find an absolute maximum or an absolute minimum, you will almost always make a candidate's test. The first step is to find the critical values where f prime is equal to zero or where f prime is undefined. But looking at the graph of f prime, we see that it is continuous everywhere. So there is nowhere f prime is undefined. So let's just erase that part. Since they gave us the graph of f prime, it is easy to see where f prime is equal to zero. It's equal to zero here, 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 and here. Now we can set up the candidates test, which is really just a t-chart of f of x, where the x values include the critical points that we just found and the endpoints of the interval. Now we need to find the value of f at each x value. We can use the first fundamental theorem of calculus. The part that you have to memorize is that the integral of f prime from a to b gives the change in the value of f from a to b. Then common sense tells you that the end value, f at b, will equal the initial value, f at a, plus the net change in value. In the setup of the problem, we were told that f at 1 is equal to 3. This is our initial value. According to the first fundamental theorem of calculus, the end value f at negative 5 should equal the initial value f at 1 plus the integral of f prime from 1 to negative 5. That will be the change in the value of f from 1 to negative 5. We know that f at 1 is 3, so we just need to calculate the integral of f prime from 1 to negative 5. This is the graph of f prime. So the integral of f prime from 1 to negative 5 will be the net signed area from 1 to negative 5. So let's calculate the area of the blue region and the yellow region. Both of these are semicircles. The blue region has a radius of 1. The area of a circle is pi r squared. So the area of a semicircle will be 1 half pi r squared. With a radius of 1, we have 1 half pi times 1 squared, which is just 1 half pi, or let's just call it pi over 2. 
How about the yellow area? The radius is 2, so the area of the semicircle will be 1 half pi times 2 squared. In other words, 1 half pi times 4. 1 half of 4 is 2, so this will be 2 pi. Be careful. When we are integrating from left to right, areas above the x-axis are considered positive, and areas below the x-axis are considered negative. But in this case, we are integrating from 1 to negative 5, from right to left. So everything is reversed, and areas above the x-axis will be negative, and areas below the x-axis are now positive. So the value of f at negative 5 will be 3 plus 2 pi minus pi over 2. Let's simplify this down a little bit. 2 pi is the same thing as 4 pi over 2. 4 pi over 2 minus 1 pi over 2 is 3 pi over 2. So this is 3 plus 3 pi over 2. So that is f at negative 5. Let's move on to f at negative 3. f at negative 3 will equal the initial value of 3 plus the integral of f prime from 1 to negative 3. So here's 1 and here's negative 3. So the value of f at negative 3 will be the initial value of 3 plus 2 pi. We are given that f at 1 is 3. So no calculations required for this one. f at 4 should equal the initial value of 3 plus the integral of f prime from 1 to 4. The integral of f prime from 1 to 4 is just the area of this triangle. So that's 1 half base times height. So that is equal to 3. And we are integrating from left to right. So an area above the x-axis will be positive. Since the value of this integral turned out to be 3, now we have 3 plus 3. So f at 4 is 6. The value of f at 5 should equal the initial value of 3 plus the integral of f prime from 1 to 5. The integral of f prime from 1 to 5 is the net area of the yellow triangle and this tiny blue triangle. We already calculated that the area of the yellow triangle is positive 3, and the tiny blue triangle clearly has an area of negative 1 half of a unit. Together, that makes 2.5. So f at 5 is equal to 3 plus 2.5. In other words, f at 5 is 5.5. We were looking for the absolute minimum, and we can easily see that the lowest value is 3, which occurs at an x value of 1. f of x has an absolute minimum of 3 at x equals 1. See Candidates Test.